Hello and welcome back on my channel for a new video about World War I items and World War I memorabilia. Today I want to discuss with you uh, the uh, French officer tunic model 1893. Uh, this, uh, this tunic, this uniform was still worn at the beginning, at the onset of the war in 1914 by a French officer from various branches, such as the uh, artillery or even the infantry. I say even for the infantry because officially in 1913 a new uh, uniform was introduced for the uh, infantry officer uh, which was the tunic or the Varose actually uh, model 1913. Uh, however, what you have to remember is that French officers had to pay for their own equipment and for a young officer uh, to buy a tailor-made uniform would barely cost one or two months uh, of pay. So what they usually do is that they simply uh, kept wearing the old uh, tunic, the old uniform they had up until uh, this one was uh, uh, in, a, in a bad shape and then they would buy the new model. Which means that uh, at the onset of the war in uh, 1914, many, uniform, uh, many officers from the infantry uh, were still wearing the old, at the time, uh, 1893 uh, tunic, uh, which is what we are uh, seeing today. So also uh, worth notice is that if this uh, tunic was introduced in 1893 uh, uh, for the infantry, uh, for the artillery and for uh, the engineering corps, the one you see on the left, uh, this was introduced in 1906. Uh, the, the infantry one were first uh, having uh, seven uh, buttons and starting in uh, 1900 they would get nine buttons. So let's dig a little deeper. So what we have here, it's uh, a French uh, officer for uh, the 17th Infantry Regiment. You can see the regiment at the collar. Uh, you can tell it's uh, the infantry for two reasons. First of all, the pants. So the pants is uh, red and black uh, and that's for the uh, infantry officer. And then on the tunic, you will have the flaming grenade of uh, the uh, infantry. Uh, we also notice that uh, soldier from uh, the drag, uh, the um, the cuirassiers uh, would have a very very similar uh, uniform so it's sometimes hard to distinguish between uh, the infantry and the cuirassiers uh, here it's very easy there is not uh, 17 uh, cuirassier regiments so 17 will simply be uh, the uh, infantry what do we have here we have uh, a holster for the revolver model uh, 1892 uh, yes 1892 uh, the Ordnance Revolver model 1892. Uh, you will have uh, the uh, issue, or not really issue, because like as I said, the officer have to buy their own equipment, but you have the belt. Then here it's uh, for uh, the, the canteen, I will show you in the back. And this uh, big pouch, the leather pouch that you see on the side, uh, is a porte carte, so basically to, uh, to, to carry, uh, for the officer to carry the different types of maps, as well as uh, some, uh, some other items he may want to, to carry with him. So uh, this officer is a uh, captain. Uh, if you remember uh, my introduction about uh, the French KP, you will know that if you have three strikes, it means captain. And that's about it. Um, if we were to turn around uh, this uh, mannequin, oh yes, and for the, uh, the, the KP, here you can see that uh, he's actually following uh, the order uh, from, I don't remember if it's 1912, anyway, a pre-war order asking uh, all infantry officers to uh, cover uh, their uh, cap uh, with a specific uh, fabric, a blue fabric, to make them uh, less uh, conspicuous, for them to be uh, less visible, especially compared to the troops, because the high command, the French high command was kind of afraid that enemy sniper would on priority target the French officers, uh, and therefore, uh, if they were too easily distinguishable uh, from uh, the uh, the, the rest of uh, the, the soldier, they will be killed first. But also you have to notice, so if I said many uh, French officers, especially reservists, went to the war still uh, wearing this tunic, uh, normally also uh, a French order was for them to wear a coat, an overcoat above this tunic to hide it. Uh, however, it was August and it was uh, 35 to 40 degrees uh, Celsius. Uh, so, well, um, when you look at the tombs, uh, especially if you uh, take uh, the tombs of uh, Alain Fournier, which was a French author and was killed in the summer of 1914. Uh, you can see that uh, when they found his remains, uh, he was only wearing this tunic uh, without any, um, any overcoat. It's also uh, often uh, written uh, in uh, diaries uh, of uh, soldiers, especially reservists, arriving to the front wearing this uniform instead of the 1913 tunic, uh, as well as in some pictures, if you look at a uh, newspaper from the time, uh, you will see 
an incredible number of officers still wearing uh, this, uh, this uh, tunic model 1893. So that's on the right, a captain of a 17th uh, infantry regiment. Uh, of course, if you've seen my video uh, about the KP, you will see that it is just a cover. You can actually uh, remove the cover and then you will have uh, a French uh, normal KP, red and black with the regimental number, so here 17 in the front. Now, what we have uh, on uh, the left now, it's uh, an, uh, again a captain, three stripes, but this time from the artillery. So the artillery, you can easily recognize them uh, by, I mean, two ways. First of all, you look at the paint. The paint is uh, black and red, the reverse color uh, from uh, the uh, infantry. Uh, this paint is actually a common both for the artillery and for the engineer's corps. It simply means uh, that it is a, um, a technical uh, unit. So artillery is considered a technical unit. Uh, what makes it differ uh, from uh, the uh, engineer, engineer's corps is two things. First of all, if you look at the buttons, you will be able to see the cross cannon of uh, the artillery. And if you look on the, the sleeves, at the bottom of the sleeve, you have also red rectangle. And this red rectangle uh, will not be red but black uh, if it was from the engineer's corps. You can also distinguish between the artillery and the infantry the types of button. Uh, are for, are not quite the same, it's like a little ball uh, for the uh, artillery when it's a bit uh, flatter uh, for the infantry. Uh, what else? As you can see here, uh, he is not wearing uh, his uh, KP cover. Uh, that's simply because I do not have two KP cover, and the KP cover I have is for the, uh, uh, the, the seven, uh, for the KP of the 17th Infantry Regiment. Uh, that's the first one, and second, I'm not quite sure the order uh, was also for the uh, artillery uh, to cover the KP for two reasons. First of all, because they were not as uh, close to the enemy usually as the, uh, the artillery, so the, the, it would make it more difficult to find uh, an officer. And second, and more likely, it's simply because uh, the, the, the KP is already black, uh, so less visible than the, 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 the red uh, from the, uh, uh, the, um, the infantry. But I'm not quite sure uh, that they add uh, to it where also KP cover for the artillery. Again, if you have, but this time, the reference number of the order, please put it in the comments, um, and, uh, and, I, and I, you will have been corrected. Or oh, actually uh, educated, because I'm not quite sure. Uh, what else? That's uh, about it. I will just maybe uh, turn uh, this uh, mannequin around. So something else that is, uh, this officer is uh, wearing, it's uh, basically a canteen, uh, always a war in the back. And uh, what it's missing is also this little cup, I should have put it on the mannequin, I just forgot. Uh, also worth notice that it's a two litre uh, canteen. Uh, normally at the beginning of the war they would have had uh, one litre. Also something worth to notice is the, the color of uh, this, um, this canteen. It's uh, bleu, a grid fer bleuté, so a uh, different shade of blue and it will then uh, the uh, horizon blue uh, later in the war. Something that is also quite uh, interesting with uh, those type of uniform is that very often, since they were tailor-made, you have the name of their owner inside. Uh, so I will show you in, a, in another jacket, so I do not have to remove it. I mean, do not have to remove the one from uh, those uh, mannequins. So this uh, jacket is again uh, for a captain. Uh, this time for the uh, 40th uh, Artillery Regiment. And uh, if you look at on the inside pocket, what you will uh, often find on those type of uniform, it's a little etiquette, exactly such as uh, this one. Just let me up, put it in front of you. Yes. So a little etiquette like that, uh, telling you the tailor. So here it's uh, Mr. Guisson uh, in Saumur, France. Uh, the, uh, as well uh, the date when it was made, so here it's a uh, 611, so 6 uh, for June uh, 1911, and then you will have the name of the uh, owner of the uniform, so here it's Monsieur de Luger, uh, which allows you this kind of information to do some research uh, about uh, the man who uh, used to own uh, the, uh, the, this uniform, the officer. So in the case of Monsieur de Luger, for instance, I managed to, uh, to, I mean, to find him, and uh, unfortunately uh, this, this, uh, this captain was uh, killed in 1914, I think it was in November, uh, during his duty uh, by uh, a German shell, who, uh, that, uh, I mean, the German shell took away his leg and uh, he died uh, on the field before being able to reach uh, the, the hospital. So all this kind of information are information you often manage to find on different websites, so on Memoir des Hommes, for instance, uh, in France, it's a good website to find some information. Uh, I think that's where I found uh, Mr. de Luger. You also have uh, the 
database called Leonor, Leonor uh, which uh, gives you uh, the name and uh, the, um, the files of all or almost all uh, men born before 1900 who received the Legion of Honor. So it's a good way to find some information as well as on the uh, regimental uh, diaries. You can also find a lot of information. Uh, for instance, uh, there is also a name in uh, this uh, jacket for the uh, 11th, uh, I mean for this uh, captain from the uh, 11th uh, artillery regiment, which is actually uh, in, for this specific case, the 11th uh, artillery, uh, the fortress. So uh, this uh, man served uh, in, a, in a fortress uh, as a uh, captain of artillery. Uh, anyway, so his, uh, his name is also inside this uniform. His name was a Badre. Uh, so I managed uh, again to, to, I mean, to uh, to find some more information about it. He was an engineer and he invented uh, uh, something for, uh, for our cars, uh, quite, uh, I mean, that we are still using today. Uh, unfortunately, on the, the uniform for the 17th uh, uh, Infantry Regiment, so the uniform on the, on the right, uh, I could not find the name uh, inside. So this one, I don't know who it belonged to. So yes, this is also a little thing that I find is interesting. In most uh, items you can find, most uniform, it's often you would have a name of a soldier and. Uh, uh, if uh, you also happen to have his rank and maybe also his, uh, uh, his, um, his regiment, then it's quite easy to find him and to retrace the, the whole history of the object and of the, its, be its bearer. So thanks a lot for watching and uh, I hope uh, you enjoyed this uh, video and uh, see you next week for another one. Bye!